This is genius. This is Joe Rogan, and you're listening to The Gritty Bowman. I've never seen so many mullets in my life. No, it's just about feeling good. You, you had more chins than a Chinese phone book for I a while. Man. Yeah, it, it was, was bad. bad. Yeah. I mean, he's right. He said, Goonies never say die. <laughs> We're going. We got this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was pulling the trigger, but the safety was on. <laughs> <laughs> I just Randy Black Not Eagle. Randy that's Black it. Eagle. Boom. That's that's my. That's how we roll. Just drop <laughs> the mic and walk away. <laughs> On this episode of Gritty Bowman, we hang out with friend Tim Burnett of Solo Hunter at the Mountain Ops booth at the Western Hunting and Conservation Expo in Salt Lake City. If you don't watch Solo Hunter, I think you're missing out. There are many great episodes, but I highly recommend one of Tim's most recent shows, Season Six, Episode Thirteen. Gale Force Bow Hunt. This is a December mule deer hunt in Idaho. Holy crap. That is a big. That is a big deer right there, boys. You can download this episode at solohunter.vhx.tv. That's solo, S O L O, hunter, H N T R. Dot vhx.tv. Also, you can watch many of the prior season episodes of Solo Hunter on Tim's YouTube channel, Solo Hunter. Also, you can find links to Tim's shows in the show notes of this podcast on our website. This podcast is a four-man show, as my hunting partner, Anthony Spencer, and co-host, Aaron Snyder, join in for a laid-back hunt chat with the Solo Hunter. If you like the show, please go to our website at grittybowman.com and subscribe to this podcast and tell your mates and pals about us. Do us a favor and please take a moment to leave us a rating or a review on iTunes or on our YouTube channel. Send your questions and podcast ideas to grittybowman at gmail.com. If you're listening to this on iTunes, you can see the video version of this podcast on our website at www.grittybowman.com. Calm. I've never seen so many mullets in my life. <laughs> is this an Eva Shockey line? It is. is that a real mullet? For Eva, real? Is it like it a, is. That's an Eva Shockey line. Yeah, man. That? That's that many. How many people were? Wow. All right. Well, let's go. We're, we'll start rolling. All right, folks. Welcome to the Gritty Bowman podcast. I'm here with Tim Pernett, solo hunter extraordinaire. Yeah. I got uh, Anthony Spencer, hunting partner for life, and uh, Aaron Snyder. And uh, we're here at the Western Hunting and Conservation Expo, which has been fun. We're sitting here next to the Eva Shockey line, which... <laughs> we're next to the butts of Eva Shockey. Dude, <laughs> this is insane. Brian thought they were yeah. in line for him. I, yeah, I yeah. thought that was a Gritty Bowman line, but <laughs> turns out... They just keep going right by us. <laughs> well, and we're all eye level, too. It's like, everybody's... We're just... If, if, if no one is here this? to see me. Yeah. That's, that's what's reinforced here, right? If, it's like, if I would have known this while she was on the podcast yesterday, I would have had her sign a bunch of stuff <laughs> and sold it. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, guys, just go online. to the end of the line. Be like, I've got them already. I'll sell them to you for 10 bucks each. <laughs> yeah. It's like the welfare line. Yeah. I, oh, I remember it's waiting. First, it's the first of the month right here. Yeah, exactly. I remember um, being in a line uh, for REI. At this used gear sale, used gear sale yeah. in Colorado, which, by the way, that oh. store down in the flagship store is insane. And people got there the night before, and this line was yeah, long. Blocks. Yeah, and people camped. Yeah. And I got there, and I got there really early, but there was already a lot of people there. And uh, people showed up selling coffee and donuts to everyone in the line. Like, yep. Walking around, there was like concession people there to like. What is what's that? A, what's amazing with the REI stores in Colorado is you go to the one that I go to. Yeah. They're all they're all hunters. Every one of them. oh well, almost everyone. Like, I was a little nervous the one time because I went in and um, this lady that she's probably sixty, right? And and she looked everything like a granola head you would possibly imagine, and she was like. Are you a hunter? And I was like, oh, <laughs> son of a... And, uh, I'm out. I'm out and I said, no. yeah, I am. And she was like, can you bring me elk burger? <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. And she was like, the manager, Rob, said, you have a lot of it. And I'm like, yeah, I'll bring you a bunch. How much do you want? She's, I mean, sweet lady. And so, But you uh, go to the downtown, yeah. you know, bear claw necklace. Do you kill animals? I'm like, I do. In fact, I've gotten so good at animals. I help people design gear 
that helps kill the animal. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't go over very well either. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a it's a it's a different place. Um, it's pretty cool. You're working with Under Armour. Yep. And yeah. um, big part of you and your show. We talked about this on the last podcast, which was awesome. Thanks for doing that. Oh no, I'm glad it turned out. Yeah, and I, it's funny. We didn't get into a lot of hunting and stuff. We we right. talked kind of about brands and company. I just well, selfishly like, hoarded your information yeah. for me. Well, it was the first time we met, too, so I was like, that's what was the first thing on your mind. So yeah, it was. And get all that crap out of the way, and then we can get into the good stuff. Yeah, and, and but, you know, I was so surprised. Like, I got a couple of comments like, man, get Tim back on and, and pick his brain about solo hunting. And then, but I'd say nine out of ten people responded and said, that was an awesome podcast. I, I The behind the scenes, kind of this yeah. this whole brand building thing, that was really cool. All, all the emails I got, because, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not an Aaron Snyder personality <laughs> as it is anyway, but all the emails and reaction that I got, which was great, thank you, um, was along those same lines, you know. Yeah. You really helped me think. I mean, one guy I, I read just yesterday, he's like, you really made me reevaluate my knife making business yeah and he's in he's in australia and he's like thank you very much he's like you re- it was really eye-opening and i was trying to think of what i might have said and <laughs> really doesn't matter because it, it helped him so right no know, it, those, we're, we do that all the time we got like 75 episodes or something now published and um people will say oh i love this you, this was a big impactful uh, moment for me this this podcast what you said and, and i'll call aaron up and go do you remember what we said? <laughs> and he's worse than I am. He's like, I don't remember. Well, but yeah. That's the cool thing about like a genuine conversation, though. Like if you're thinking about this podcast, looking around, wondering, well, oh, I wonder what everybody's thinking watching us do this podcast. You're not going to. Right. So like when it, that's the true testament of a good, genuine conversation is when you cannot remember a thing that was said, but you know it was a damn good time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then if you want to go back and hear what was said, you can go listen to it. Oh, yeah. And, and then pick yourself apart. And I did totally, <laughs> which happens a lot. Like, yeah. Anthony hasn't been on these as much. So he'll listen yeah. to these and he'll be like, man, I sound dumb. Yeah. Or it's just natural for you to criticize yourself when you. Oh. When or you, I know you well, so well that I'll think, now ah, you sounded dumb. Yeah, <laughs> I get that a lot. That's why you have good hunting partners because they'll be like, call me up and be like, Brian, you know, I love you, but. When you say things like this, you sound like this. And I'm like, look, I didn't mean it like that. Meant. It just came out like that. My, my buddy Paul is the only one truthful with me, probably yeah. because he doesn't mind buying his own gear. You're not going to get <laughs> <laughs> It's like uh, either that or he's the one that's not afraid. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, no, Paul is one of my best friends, and, uh, yeah. and I give him packs. But he doesn't ever ask. But either way, Frank is not going to come up to me and say, dude, you sound like an idiot because he might the, the gear train may stop. So yeah, I don't yeah. get that a lot. Paul's the only one. Well, it's it's good to part. have those kind of people. The good thing is about sounding like an idiot is there's a lot of idiots out there to listen to it, so they can relate. <laughs> right. And there's a good chance, there's a 75% chance, three other guys might sound worse than you right now. So I, yeah. I may be okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I, I just saw, I went home, and... I didn't realize you had your show on VHX that I could actually go right. download it. it yeah. It's funny. It, like I thought there were a few, but I started searching, and there's quite a few out there that are now, once they've aired on, on the networks, they, they're available for download. And you can rent them or buy them or whatever. Yeah, that's all beholden on what, what you've negotiated with the networks right. for their contracts. And so, you know, I, I've, I've consumed all the YouTube stuff, but in your, like, recent stuff, is more recent stuff is still a bit, there's that's a, the next level there's is VHX yeah there none of the stuff that's on YouTube uh, yeah there's things on VHX that that you can't see on YouTube yep. yet you know yep. we're, we can only trickle them out monthly as far as the episodes go so I'm doing a lot more like YouTube exclusives you know web exclusives I've got one coming out with my brother and I we just did a mountain goat hunt in Montana he drew a tag and and uh, we had a grizzly encounter, and he shot the mountain goat with his longbow. So it was like the first time he and I had hunted yeah. together longer than a day hunt in 15 years. So, so much packed into this one little one little hunt. But I'm not going to use it for solo hunter, you know. Yeah. So I've decided to do a web exclusive. Cool. Do a lot more of those things. It, no, it's it's a it's a it was cool. I so I I, I downloaded them, and I'm like, I'm just going to watch one a week or so, and. I think I watch them all the same night. It just happens. Like I just start watching one. I'm like, that was that was cool. Let's go on the next adventure. Let's go on the next adventure. Before I know it, I've watched them all. I'm like, 
dang it. That's why I can't watch Netflix because I'll get into a series and next yeah. thing you know, it's like, it's 11, 15, uh, 48 minutes. Okay, I, I can be in bed by midnight. And then the one that ends at midnight, <laughs> it's like, oh, damn it. I got to watch the next hey, one. Man, I want to say, we yeah. have a rule now. I'm like, no TV shows. Brian is banned from, yeah. from TV shows because Suzanne will pop one in and it's it's a it's not like a movie. Like a movie's legit because when it's over, it's over. Your hour and a half, two hour movie, not it's over. You hanging every yeah, now I'm going minutes. to bed. Now it's like every 45 minutes, it leaves you like they they pros at sucking you in. Well, we, we well, just, uh, we're watching Elementary right now with uh, Sherlock Holmes, Watson, yeah. Watson's Lucy Liu, <laughs> and um, I got that sleep. works. Yeah, well, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know. Politically yeah. correct, anyway. Yeah, and uh, I you know I try to go to bed by like 9:30, 10, and then I, I get up. At, Three at the, anyway, it's bad, right? So yeah. Lucy got taken, right? And I'm like, well, shit. We got to watch the next one. And so we watch the next one, and it's like 11. And uh, I'm not totally out of it yet. I can still comprehend. I'm like, and the next one ends, and I'm like, so it's almost midnight. And for yeah. me, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Well, then Jody watches the next one, right? So now I you're get, off. I got to get home early <laughs> to start it off. Oh, I'm like, yeah. honey. My movie partner has screwed me. You cannot watch one. You can't get out of the cycle. You screwed it up. That's here. not fair. Yeah. That's, that's what happens. So I'll watch like five, right, or three or four. What Suzanne's, we're not supposed to watch them without each other. And then I have to pretend like I haven't seen them. And we're watching them like, she's like, you're not, you're surfing your phone. And I'm like, she's like, you've seen this. Yeah. I was going to say, Jody sees right through yeah. that. But when I was in the territory, she's. What's there's one called Safe Haven. It's a bunch of different FBI, and they got a house they can. I don't know yeah. what it's called. She's like on season four or five, right? <laughs> I come back and I just dive right in, and she's like, "Oh no, it'll be fine." I'm like, "I missed four you years." Cannot <laughs> miss an <laughs> episode. <laughs> yeah, I missed four what do you years. Mean? Yeah, no, that's like, yeah, diving right into yeah, I, they, you know, twelfth grade. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm no, fine. like they have the episode plots, and then they have like the season plot, and then there's yeah. like the series plot, and you yeah. can't, you cannot yeah. miss an it, episode. It, it builds on it. Um, like I wonder if you, if you could schedule hunting or like that. Would you'd, you'd have to fake it, but like, and you leave like Tim on the cliff. <laughs> he make it. Suck him in, right? Here well, comes, well I, I, there might be some of that this year. Just, yeah. just disclaimer. <laughs> I might be naked inside of a cooler. I'm just saying. I, I, I had a uh, an, an opportunity to get on a um a show. Uh, I probably shouldn't even list what it was, but either way, there was um. I found out quickly there were some fake cougars, fake grizzlies, and oh, fake geez. wolves in the mix. Oh, yeah, and, we, uh, we know what that one was. And, uh, yeah, There's no sense hiding it. <laughs> Everybody else that? knows what it was. Yeah. So the shed hunting. I, I was going to let you <laughs> say it, not me. Yeah. So I, I Everybody knows <laughs> you'll say it. Uh, oh, yeah. That's right. So the re- what happened with that, and uh, I... Um, that's one of the reasons I like your show. It's yeah. full of shit. So I, I, <laughs> well, I, we had I this conversation it. before the show was even released. Well, so. Oh, okay. So yeah. the... the they cut, I'm, I'm, like, excited. I'm, like, we can do a true shed hunting shed kind hunting of show. show. For me, shed hunting is about camaraderie, getting into shape, and then obviously seeing what made it. And then yeah. it's also kind of a big penis thing. Like, who found the biggest shed? Which it's always Jeremy. We always lose that. <laughs> but it's, like, I thought we would get the show, you know, we back Yeah, back like, like, really tell the story of what it's like to be shed hunting. Yeah, yeah. which they hit it's never the been passion done, behind it's it. It's never been done well. You and, know? No. I mean, and we, that's. Well, I was excited about it, but yeah. go ahead. Wasn't it called Shed no, Wars? No, I, I cut you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the title itself was. Well, I they got I got around the title because like I can see because we have a contest every day yeah. of who We're wins. Fit. Yeah. But you know the war thing. I'm like, well, it's probably just to hype it up. So, I got. I think God was looking down upon me. I was <laughs> eating a slice of pizza at Whole Foods, and the producer was there. Mm. And uh, just happenstance. And he comes over, and he's telling me how excited he is about this show. And he's yeah. like, we've rented wolves, and we've got... And I'm like, well, hold the phone. <laughs> what are you talking about? And cougars and mountain lions. I'm like, uh, so what? Explain it to me. <laughs> and uh, so Monday morning, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that show. And they're like, why? Wow. And, you uh, called me, and yeah. you're like... Dude, I'm not doing this. Because yeah. we were talking. It was like when when you and I were talking with Solo, and yeah. you're like, "Dude, I'm not doing it." I'm like, yeah. "Why? What's going on?" You're like, "Just you, just watch, just wait." Oh, and then, gay as hell. Or, sorry, Katie. It could have it could have been really cool, you know. Nobody's done it. it. Really could have been. So Cheston and I, Cheston at Phone Scope, you know, we're good friends. We've been talking about it for years, doing yeah. a, a a shed hunting episode. But it's like, how do you do it the right way? That's not going to, I mean, uh, be boring. But but like to. 
I, I just think people, uh-huh. if you get the right personalities, um, you know, like Merit what Snyder. I had originally thought of was my crew, like Frank and, and yeah. Colton and I, and we get like eight guys we backpack yep. in, we got the teepees, and, you know, there's always something stupid that happens. But don't and, eat. We could do it. Let's do it and do it. A, we'll do it a web oh. exclusive on Gritty Bowman and Dude. Solo on our list. <laughs> like rock, my company will awesome. produce it. Last we'll produce year, it. Jeremy, do it. we have this huge plan to make this huge loop and come back in the middle like a heart. Yeah. And we all take off, and there is no sheds right in the center of the heart where they always are. And we come <laughs> back, and Jeremy's got 36 shed covered <laughs> in aspen. <laughs> That's because um, he had been there the week before. He <laughs> no. had them all in. That Stop. little app. Did the reverse loop and walked right down the middle. And uh, I was ben, like, right there. I, well, we got back, and Mike, he's like, you didn't find any? I'm like, no, but I saw a lot of footprints there. <laughs> and, uh, but, and Jeremy, that dude, like, is a, a shed hound. But to me, like, uh, Chess and those guys, they're after it, too. They get it. You know, at the end of it, you could have a competition of who found more. But even then, we're hunting public land, shed hunting, you know. And then yeah. you go, I go to the Henry's where they're, you know, it's a little bit different or yeah. whatever. But I, I think it would be cool for, I mean, I just don't need these Mortal Kombat shed hunting. It's not that it, big of a it's deal. It's already way more blown up than it has. I mean, every year there's more guys. And I'm, I'm not into it myself. Like, if I'm out hiking around with my boy yeah. and we find a shed, cool. But I'm not going out and spending time away because I spend so much time at other times yeah. of the year. Yeah. Like, man, there's a lot of guys out there picking sheds and putting pressure on animals sometimes, you know, needlessly in that. But we've, we've filmed a bunch of stuff. And, and, you know, I put, I put some of it together, and I'm like, man, this is just so average. We're just hunting. Nothing epic happened. No one almost died. Nothing, you know, it's just. <laughs> and there's this, this desire to make this really cool show, right? Then I watch, like, your show, and it's cool, but it's just what it is. There's not, like, this overproduced factor to it. And I'm addicted. Like, I want to mm. see it. And it, it's really hit home to me over the last couple of years that, just being real people are craving that they just want real what honestly happened just real stuff whether you're really dynamic on camera or not just something that they can look at and see as authentic and genuine that they're out doing you know and can relate with and i realize it doesn't need to be overproduced but you kind of and and that's where i think shed wars they they well that they've uh, tripped and fell because that's my opinion. No, that's a hundred percent. Because they just was. overproduced it. They tried well, to make it shows, into something that didn't. Yeah. Did well, it really? The, the get war. The war the, they should have shown was his buddy going through. Yeah, the, and, that's real life, well, right? That's hilarious. They, actually, they, <laughs> they gave us the parameters of when the, you needed to find the sheds, right? Which, mm-hmm. you know, I already said the name. But it's way before sheds even drop, and so I was <laughs> like, you know what? If you want me to fake it, we've yeah. already found these. I'll f- go hide the damn things where we found them. I, I understand the sheds haven't dropped. I can get over <laughs> some of that, but a cougar attacking me in the middle of shed hunting, I can't. Well, and then the guy goes, well, you said you saw a bear when you were shed hunting. I'm like, yeah, it ran in front of the truck, scared shitless. <laughs> Not the same. It's a grizzly <laughs> tracking me down while I have horns in on my back. In a country where there aren't but any see, grizzlies. Yeah, exactly. what, is the, what is the drive for, I mean, what? Does, does it really sell, though? Is it, that why? It, I mean, does it really sell? Is that, or just, it, are the people producing the shows that out of touch with the, the community? Yes and no. No, it sells to the networks because that's what's always been done. That's what they assume, ha- that's what's done in the mainstream media, yeah. you know. Those that, those that do it really, really well, you don't recognize, you know. I mean, there's ways of doing things in the, in the production world that if you really want to tie together a good cohesive story and have, like, a flawless production with plots, subplots, stories, pre, you know, uh-huh. looking forward into the, to beyond that one episode, you've got to create something to it. But hunting is hunting, man. We're still just going out trying to kill something and bring it home and eat it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Are we trying, are we in the entertainment industry or are we in the hunting industry? Well, Unfortunately and fortunately for me, yeah. we're in both. You yeah. know, and Without that form of entertainment, I don't have a job I, in the hunting industry. I just think like we were talking about Brian filming or some backpack hunts next year. And there's so much epic, in my opinion, epic crap that goes on on a backpack hunt. Real stuff. Just the country's yeah. epic well, enough that, you know. Yeah, I mean. Really is. People don't experience the real thing. No. Well, I, I just... Um, Run, like you know, 150 pounds, and a deer pops up, and you're trying. I'm Colton's trying to get the pack off my back, and then 
Colton fell down and the G5 about took out the hang down, right? He falls <laughs> over the G, you know, the main beam right. at five. Is I pit. saw the photograph. Oh, yeah. It, it, was, he was, it was touch and go there. For, he, was, uh, he was pissed because I, I was like, hold on, let me get my camera. <laughs> and he stuck to the ground. I'm like, no, dude, that's, this is never going to happen again. And you're okay. Just lay there for a minute. Stay put. But that kind of stuff, you know, the lightning yeah. storm that hit. And to me, that that's what, yeah. you know, kind of rings true to me right. with your show is it's – I'm like, yeah, I but can see that happening. Yeah, that sucks. That's where I envy you guys because you're out there with your buddies. You know, yeah. you you guys yeah. can experience. Like, that's why I love hunting with my brothers. Like, there's stuff that goes on that you that you're never gonna. So when you're by yourself, like things are a lot more calculated. Things are a lot more, you know, whatever they are. So you really yeah. don't have opportunities like that. I miss that a lot. I yeah. really do. You could change so, it to solo ish hunters. Yeah, <laughs> solo sometimes <laughs> hunter. <laughs> but no, that's why I'm so excited about these other projects that I'm doing. And yeah. the, the website of it is like, man, I I can do a lot more of that. I'd love to hunt with you guys at some point, and doing just like Prime Pro and Off Grid, where I go out and experience different things like. I'm like you. I'm a curious guy. I like people. I want yeah. to know. You know, I like people in doses. Well, we. But I want to know us, more. And so that's why these projects are so fun to me. Because I started, we started out the Gritty Bowman, right? And I'm doing bow hunting only kind of stuff. And we were doing films and we we're like, well, this is a great rifle hunt. But that's, that's a rifle hunt. We're Gritty Bowman. But then over time, I've, it's just life. It's yeah. a life show. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, 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 it's rifle hunting. It's bow hunting. It's wives and husbands and how they get along it's wow. how they support each other when one wants to hunt and the other doesn't it's kids and i've realized that um you, know, you look at like joe rogan who's on the podcast yesterday yeah. which was pretty cool yeah his show's all over the place it's the joe rogan that's what makes it awesome you're reaching such a broad demographic but that's that was like the both the beauty and the bite in the ass with solo hunters like the name says solo hunter you but know, that's the what i'm about is, to get at and so everybody's like i'm wondering though at this point would it matter? You know, does it matter? matter? It does for the for the bulk of it. I think it matters. I like, do too. For, for the me bulk personally, of it. Like, people expect brand, bow hunting, and I still hunt a lot along. Yeah, you know? but I like that you're but. talking about branching out and Man. doing these web exclusive and stuff because I think I I I think people just want more yeah. more, more timber. Yeah. Burnett, more Burn. more solo hunter. Yeah, which is well, you more than just the fact that you're solo. Well, you guys want more of me because you know me, but <laughs> do do. The audience want. To me, I look oh. at it as I think I feel like people follow Solo Hunter not just because of me or because of Remy. I think they follow it because, uh, at least from conversations, I have, because it's an adventure that they're having. Yeah, it's a relatable experience. They're now experiencing, and the way that it's filmed and the way that it's cut together in the in the produ- post production, like the the comments are always, "Man, I, I felt like I hunted with you. I felt it's your true. pain. You know, I froze with you." There's I, a lot whatever. more. I feel like you're talking to me personally a lot more than when we're talking. You get to watch when you watch us. You're observing camaraderie between two friends. I love that, I love and that. that's great. But it's a different experience with Solo Hunter because I feel like I'm your friend and you're telling me oh, about yeah, it. Yeah, and that's a cool. It's kind of cool because I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I I know what you're going through, Tim. Yeah, yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm talking to you on the <laughs> other side, but you're like. I had, I had guys <laughs> screaming at me. They're like, he's like, dude, I was screaming at the TV, throw down the camera, go kill the deer. Yeah. And then he's like, then you threw down the camera and went and killed the deer. He's like, yeah. that was awesome. And I'm, I'm thinking, forget the camera. Just do it, Tim. Kill the deer. You know, that I'm, I'm the same way. And yeah. it's like, I am completely forgive you for not getting on camera. It doesn't yeah. doesn't yeah, bother we, me. We've done that a time I, or two. I think, though, the <laughs> well, we talked about it yesterday, the 15, 10 years ago, it was, you know, dead, 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 18 Kill kill shot. Shot. You didn't have two or three kills in an well, episode. And you the were. thing is now, I mean, especially I'll have 755 photos, and then at the end there's one dead animal photo. Yeah. And people, of course, this Your photos everybody, are awesome, by the but way. Yeah. People I freaking seem, love it. Well, they like that the journey, right? Yeah. I even yeah. wrote an article called Telling Your Story. And what I found out, I mean, you have to have something dead at the end of it, or you're a hiker with a heavy weapon. <laughs> um, T- turns out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got to shoot shit sometimes. But yeah. I think people want to hear more of the story because uh, – they're, they're living it. They're, yeah. you know, eventually they're either living it through you and are going to live it themselves or they're living it themselves. But when it just kind of like, yeah, it sucked that yeah. much for me, too, you know, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, and, you're, and yeah. you do a great it job make, of telling It makes sense. That. Like, we, I was talking to the Outdoor Channel last Friday, Thursday, Friday, and we were talking about positioning for the next couple of years and looking beyond just what, what we do, you know. And what, what it all came down to was the highest rated episodes and content that we produce 
well, it just happened to be two episodes that I didn't kill anything. You know, they were just that type of an adventure. There was they had all the elements. Came home empty-handed, yeah. but and yet those rated the highest on the viewing there. And so I was like, no way, that's BS. I go to my YouTube channel. Those exact same episodes are the highest viewed, wow. highest commented on. Yeah, Ryan's been, been trying to tell me that. I, I tend to get so bummed if we didn't catch something on, didn't catch yeah. the kill shot. And Brian's like, Anthony, we got great stuff here. We got a good story. It doesn't. It, it doesn't matter. You still have to be killing stuff. Stuff still has to die. Well, and know, I've noticed that that I'm more interested in the the skinning, the packing. The whole after part. Is that because you don't know how to do it or you're more <laughs> interested? No, I just, there's so much that goes to, so often in all these years of production, people kill something and then after they're done, the movie's over. Yeah. That's because they don't do it. The handlers come in <laughs> that's and take right. care of it for yeah. them. And that's why I, I, I really enjoy that part because, yeah. and we film a lot of that and uh, it's just a neat. I still haven't seen any of your films, guy. You were going to show me your, uh, yeah, that's right. your Blacktail and. Because you did some of it solo, so I'm like, yeah, I want to see if this guy has any, I, any grit to it. I need to send you the link. Um, is it out yet, or is it just? The, we put it in the full draw film tour. Yeah, see that, nobody so. will ever see it then. Yeah. So I'm going <laughs> to. I love you. I'm oh, gonna, that's awesome. But, but wait, I got a <laughs> whole bunch. Just I thought that again. Was, I knew look, that was I have a I lot. I like those guys a lot, but, you know, I look at it. I'm like, I'm not going to spend 300 hours to put a film out that 5,000 people are going to see. Yeah. Well, I'm with Tim. I have the new film <laughs> back that they had last year, and then we've got like five more we're getting developed, produced right now. Cool. So there will be more gritty. There will be gritty Bowman films in the next few months coming out. Nice, nice. And then you can see if we're gritty or not. You're but, gritty. Yeah, you're probably <laughs> gritty. But you, you actually, if you watch the podcast um, where we recap our hunts from this year, you can see where we're going and what we're hunting, and kind of nice. people sort of got to. We, well, Go on that hunt with us. And people need to follow the social media, too, because then they get to see a lot of what's to come and a lot of what happened that they may not have seen. That's what I like about Aaron is he and I talk occasionally throughout yeah. the year, you know, little short texts back and forth or whatever. And then that when he gets back. The other day was. That was I'm awesome. I'm going to show Brian. It was righteous. Yeah. <laughs> Said uh, the snow was. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say it because it's worth it. Said uh, <laughs> something about it. I, uh, somebody said the snow was eight inches, so I went and checked, and it's a hole with two little nut signs. <laughs> we, we, have, we have a language. Yeah. We speak a language. Yeah. I can, <laughs> I can have a whole conversation with memes. I don't even have to I say know. anything. I, yeah. so Aaron oh, is beautiful. That way. Yes. But, uh, yes. Now I'm lost. I forgot what I was Oh, we were talking about uh, throughout the year, probably keeping up with me on photos. Yeah, so but, then he comes home off of his all of his yeah. hunting adventures and just does this photo purge. And to me, it's a lot like Netflix and a lot like what I, I can't get enough of it. When yeah. you just dump those photos, I really like it because they're all they all match as far as the overall look and appeal and brand. Mm -hmm. I would say the Aaron yes. Schneider brand, and they're all none of them suck. They're all no. really cool. And then there's other people involved. Like it's it's really I strive. I'm, I look at that and I'm like, damn, if I could have that and the TV show and the YouTube, yeah. man, I'd be the no, whole package. Aaron you know? puts together some in killer social media stuff yeah, like combined with the photographs. It just, it also really legitimizes, validates um, what what what, the, what he's doing because yeah. it's it's a lot of guys go hunting like that. They don't and backpacking. They just don't capture it in a photo like that oh he's it one of the reasons work. guys like me don't post photos because <laughs> it's just so good i just share <laughs> all of his anyway it makes me look good. people I, are like oh that might have been tim's well I, I tell you there uh when you the guys first get you you know with uh, the the camera snapping because yeah. i i take photos at the most inopportune well colton back got his nuts whacked off i took a photo <laughs> in uh that if you look at uh, eastman's i did an article called chasing the rabbit yeah, yeah. the cover yeah. of it is Derek stuck on a cliff and uh, his life wasn't in jeopardy, <coughs> but you know, I climbed up and I made it, and he's physically fit, so I thought rightfully he should be able to make it too, and he couldn't. So I'm above him, and I'm like, "Are you good? I'm not effing good. I'm not good at all. This was a bad idea. I can't move." I'm like, "Okay, hold on." And he thought I was there's way flat. Oh no! And I'm like, Shh, "Put that effing what? camera away." I'm like, hold on, dude, you're good, you're fine. There's at least two feet you can stand on. And then I lowered down the 550 cord and pulled his pack up. But, I mean, wait, nobody ever catches no. stuff like that. That so. sounds like my brother on this hunt, yeah. on that tease I put out. You yeah, know? yeah. I'm down. Your brother's pretty studly. You know what? Some guys were saying, oh, it looks like your brother doesn't spend as much time in the woods as you. And I'm like, no, man, that dude is so legit, it's not even funny. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he teaches. And he's four years younger than I am. He seems uh, legit to me. Yeah, but I'm, like, I'm down taking a, you know, my morning ritual in the, in yeah, the trees yeah. next thing you know he's screaming whoa where are you and i'm like i'm down here 
Well, he's running after this grizzly bear with his phone trying to get a picture as yeah. this grizzly bear is coming up <laughs> after me. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah that's funny. Yeah. Oh, Lord. But you talked about uh, his pictures having a, a brand or a feel to it. Definitely. definitely. I, when I watch Solo Hunter, there's a certain, there's, there's music and um, it, like uh, some overlays and, and special effects and stuff that just scream Solo Hunter to me. Mm. You know, and um, I am, when we do Gritty Bowman, I tend to just kind of be, there's no f- consistent feel. It's pretty random. You know, one film might be like this. <laughs> there might be music like that. There might be. That's what gritty is, right? <laughs> <laughs> I get through. Uh, Not a lot of gritty going on when Eva was on. She's yeah. very, very, very. <laughs> very calculated. I mean, she's huh? a great person. Yeah. But I didn't know what to say because I'm me. So I just didn't say anything, <laughs> You're like, right? I was like, Aaron went silent for like 20 minutes at a time. It was probably like, not a bad thing. Yeah. I, no. No. no uh-uh. Probably not. But, but, but see, I really like that about Solo Hunter. And one of the things I was going to ask you was how do you, how do you pick the feel of it? Does it just come to you? Or is there a certain feel you, you're, you're, you're gunning for? Right. It, it depends. Like, so... Music is a big thing. So what I do is when I'm doing, you know, just my paperwork, emails, whatever, I constantly have my production library of where I, where I get my production music from. I'm constantly going through tracks. So it's just basically on an autoplay going through tracks. Then all of a sudden a track will hit, and I'm like, and I'll stop everything, listen through that track, and I'll be like, that goes really, really well with my Idaho mule deer hunt. Yeah. So I'll go ahead, buy the track, dump it into the folder, I'll even open up the timeline, and I'll drop, drop in these music tracks that I feel like go with specific hunts that I've, that I've done. And then sometimes I'll just be watching a hunt, and I'm like, man, I just, I, I was listening to a track a month ago that stuck yeah. in my mind. I'll go back and find So you try to, I try to match it. That's why I do the production, you know, all year round. Because so, yeah. I try to find things there. And then sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know. And, and sometimes you do too much music, and you watch it back later, and you're like, that was stupid, you know. <laughs> So it kind of varies. I kind of, I kind of do the same thing. I play it like when I'm on the bus or yeah. on the train going to work or something, or just in the background. And then when I find one I like, I'm like, oh, that belongs to this film. Just try and not I to label it. Yeah, just try not to listen to the track too much because yeah. then you're going to get sick of it, and then you'll change it, and you're just changing it. You're yeah, not yeah. making it I, any I, better I, I or worse. Found that so. too. See, and this is why I take pictures. Yeah, yeah I, was I know. Say, it's, it's beyond me. <laughs> yeah. it's, click, click. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but cool. once I get some of that, then. Then um, what do you do from there? Like, I don't know, because really, if you looked at my raw footage, you'd be like, huh, what? So a lot of it comes, I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years. So yeah. um, both, I, I work with an editor as well um, that does some things and, and that. But for the longest time, I did all of the editing and, and that. But it's just you, you learn certain things that you like. And then certain stories and hunts just play out in a different way. And yeah. then certain music will drive you in a certain way. Yes. So you have to be open and be artistic enough to have all of those elements to come into play so that you can capitalize on what's going to be the best. Because in my opinion, that's what really makes the show what the show is, is my, my uh, passion and heart is into it from the start to the finish. Yeah. You know, I get to be out there doing the hunts in the film and the fun crap. Then I get to go through and do the business and stressful and the what's going to put food on the table crap. Then I get to do the production post that everybody's going to see that yeah. everybody else thinks is what matters. And because I'm so time invested and emotion invested in all aspects of it, I think it comes out on tape a lot of times. Not all the time, but sometimes yeah. that comes out on tape where you watch it and you're like, damn, that meant a lot to this guy. You know? it's, no. a, it's a good thing there's guys like you because I can see Brian just eating this up. And, <laughs> and the end result, I eat up. You're but over here you guys in a are coma. talking about it, I'm like, man, I just like to hunt. You're in a coma. <laughs> you're like, ah. Well, and, uh, I mean, I'm kind of being selfish here, but there's, there are guys, a lot of guys, like especially Solo Hunter fans, that, that want to produce a film of their hunt. I mean, that's yeah. why they watch the show. Um, you were saying this on the last podcast that, you thought you'd attract all these guys that hunt solo. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a badass show. You right. Know, all about the, the tough guy. And what happened is you found out there were a lot of guys that just wanted to film their own hunts. Right. And, and you got equal amount of those kind of guys. And that's a neat thing, I think, because the more guys that can get out there and share their story, and, and if they can represent hunting well, it just, it just gets that out to friends and family. I know that our films highly influenced non-hunting friends of ours. And that's, that's important, I think, for the hunting community at large. And mm-hmm. So I, I appreciate that. I, well, that's, what, that's, like, 
that's the network's push. You know, that's why they like Solo Hunter because it appeals to people that are not necessarily hunters, you know, those kinds of things. And there's other programs. So the networks are thinking about it. Obviously, we, we as hunters, like, we don't want more people out on the mountains yeah. necessarily, <laughs> but we want the industry to grow and money to keep flowing so that we can keep, you know, conserving and protecting these animals. Yep. Um, and at the end of the day, they're, if it's managed well, they're only going to issue the amount of tags that are necessary to be issued. Right. And so it, technically the same amount of people are going to be on the mountain anyway, but it's our job to make sure the money keeps flowing, you know, yeah. and the, it keeps growing and we can bring my boy into it and, and younger kids into it. Um, when you're like sitting there doing your, your films and I mean, you do voiceover, do you like kind of do the voiceover as the film goes? Do you write it all out ahead of time? How do you, how, so what's your creative process? I write a script as soon as I'm, when I'm on the hunt, sometimes it's on the hunt and I got my little phone out or I get the computer out uh-huh. when I get back to, to where I can. Sometimes I write it or I write it immediately afterwards just because it's fresh on your mind and you want to know it. Then I don't revisit that for months, you know, until I actually get into the post process. And as I'm putting the hunt together, I'm just putting the hunt together. I'm not worried about what I'm going to say or when I'm going to say it. I'm just putting the experience together. And then I go back and look at it and say, okay, how, do, how can I enhance this? Because my goal is to have an episode where there's very little, if any, voiceover to it. Yeah. But that's what I found uh, as I was watching this last few se- c- couple on the VHX I downloaded. I'm like, I'm highly entertained. So much of it was just an interview with the camera. Inside the home. Yep. Yeah. And I'm in your head. And we are terrible about that. We, we film all this stuff. Well, we don't take the time really to say what we're feeling. And, and part of that's because we're not solo. So I think we're... You're we're saying it to each other, to but, sounds, you're not, but we're not recording it. You've said it, you've said it quick, and you're like, dang, we should have got the camera yeah, out. Yeah, we that. have that happen all that's the time. And, and what, what I found, you talked earlier about getting back and, and being like, you look at your raw footage, and you're like, there's not much here. And then you make a killer show out of it. I have, I've tried to tell Anthony this. I'm like, he's like, we didn't get anything on camera. Dude, we have epic video on camera. We have all these puzzle pieces to really like knock it out of the park. Um, and I think sometimes we overthink it, like I said before. We, we think we have to like have this huge production thing. And uh, we filmed, He filmed his dad shoot a bull elk last year that was in the Full Draw Film Tour, and that film was awesome. It was just a average... Just a kill. Just a kill, yeah. Did anybody else notice Snyder's sigh just then? <laughs> we're, we're putting him to sleep. He's going to fall asleep. I know. That, that's yeah. just about I was saying, it's a the good po- thing there's artistic guys like you it's out there time to because it happens because of that. <laughs> yeah. But, when, yeah, when I look at the footage or I see what we got, oh, yeah. I'm like, man, we missed well, it. Well, we definitely, it's time to change the subject. But, <laughs> yeah, when, when, <laughs> Snyder, when Snyder goes off and starts <laughs> well, I can say watching trying. the girls walk by, it's time to change the topic. <laughs> did, did you notice that, too? I did not <laughs> notice that. I noticed him. I did not notice that twice. The The video portion of it... For me, because I have my cameras do 4K video, and right. I've bought in three. Boughten. Bought. Bought. I'll say boughten because I'm from Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> boughten as much as I want. No, <laughs> I got botany problems. Um, four, three or four Go Hero GoPro yeah. things. And yeah. That did about 15, 20 minutes. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not going to remember to turn it on. Now, Paul had it the other day of us shooting. Yeah. And it was cool. He got it set up to where it was getting good footage of us shooting. He was doing it for form. They take good reasons. slow motion stuff, too. Well, and that's what he was doing for, you know, because you can come up and say, hey, Brian, you're dropping your bow arm a little bit. And then, you know, if Brian's yeah. a little sensitive, he'll be like, no, I'm not. And then later <laughs> on, you look at the video, I'm like, oh, I was. So yeah. he just, he, he filmed the whole, um, you know, that's us shooting cool. a 40 target 3D. But for me, I've edited some foot, foot video and um, I can edit photos for 24 hours. No. Not blinking an eye. If I edited video for 24 minutes, I'd be like, Okay, it's getting old, and yeah. The, yeah, the rubber bands and the whole nine, it's just not for me. But I get guys that contact me constantly about video, and uh, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm not your guy. I'm like, it's just not for me. But photos is all of, everything I like to do, but they, I just can't I like get them both. video. I yeah. do like to, to, but you know what? This year, Aaron's going to get on film. We're going to film Aaron hunting a bunch. That's the only reason I, you know, wanted to get to know Aaron was to have him film for solo, but no. No, yeah. the dude wouldn't do it. It'd be like, it'd be like, I don't know what an episode would be like with their. It, I don't know. Be, you what, if, you'd have to edit some things, but you know, for what? TV, <laughs> it, um, it's like most people that you talk to that have hunted with me. I'm, I'm amazingly happy, right? Especially at 4 a.m., which pisses them off because I'm like up. Here's the deal, Aaron. You're amazingly happy 
in small groups. Yeah. Well, you're or, the life of the party in, in small in groups. In a group of two. <laughs> but like Colton last year, and these are the things that I think people sometimes miss in a in a trip that I, I remember for the rest of my life. Is Colton and I, we rock, paper, scissored it for uh, who had to go get water. And I'd already shot my bull. And, uh, and technically, where we were about to go was beyond ridiculous to kill Colton's bull. And so we're sitting on this cliff, and we're watching it, and, we, and I lost. And I'm like, all right, give me your bladder. And Colton's like, no, dude, I, I can't make you go get water. And I was like, he's like, we're not going to be dropping in that hole unless you make me or we both agree to it. I'll go get water. Well, so, you know, I, built, I made his dinner but, you know, when he was gone, and I got um, all his stuff prepped in his tent and everything else. Well, good hunting partners do that, and, yeah. and longtime friends do that, where a lot of guys I've hunted with don't even think about it. They just go lay down. Where with Colton, I'm like, man, he went and got water. I tell you, I'll fluff his pillow. I'm, I'm <laughs> super, and things like that I remember forever, yeah. and I can't. I wish photos could, could do that. Yeah. You could do that on film. Yeah. Like, you could yeah. say, hey— Colton went ahead and dropped down rock paper the whole nine yards, and I think a lot of people relate to that, which is why yeah. I told you when you know we started working together. One of the reasons why uh, when I say me Kafaru doesn't work with very many shows is they're just not as original as I think they they should be. And uh, we've talked about it a bunch, but I, I just you know I <laughs> some of the things I see on video are why I don't have TV now. Right? <laughs> I watch your stuff on YouTube. Yeah. I just cannot handle some of the different. Oh, I agree. Shows. I just can't handle. I, them. I think too, though, that um, like Aaron and I go hunt together. It's like Ben and Anthony and I. You're just gonna get the the whole raw deal, and us being us, and there's gonna be some macho talk. There's gonna be some. Um, we're gonna make fun of each other. Might have an argument once. We're gonna have yeah. some fights. <laughs> um, it's just honest stuff, and and then on top of it, there's just uh, some some adventure, like going down some canyons and up some things and close encounters and and I, all of that is just well how many when do you ever go on a hunt and don't come back with stories that you yeah remember well, forever well right? you guys are going to talk each other into doing things that you would never <laughs> oh, otherwise I, do i've got to say you, you guys argue right <laughs> oh yeah i i i've Ryan never I argue i never because i'm right all the time <laughs> well See? I, I i maybe we will i just cold no. and i through the entire season where there's a float and uh, I just don't um, – see that fat guy? He's like a ninja. <laughs> Jeez, um, <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah, I threw it at him earlier. So yeah. um, We just – I think when you get to arguing, and I've hunted with the guys, uh, the bullies, you know, not to say uh -huh. you're a bully or you're a bully, but, I mean, <laughs> you get two hard-headed guys. Yeah. I'm so freewheeling, like, if you're like, hey, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to do this, and I'll be like, oh, all right, cool. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> Talk to, I'll see you later. You, you know, like, like Ben, though. That's how Ben is. Ben will just, I'm out of here. Yeah. My cousin will be like, oh, I'm that's interesting. Here. See ya. <laughs> yeah. Well, but with Colton and I, we mesh so well. The only time, like, we're with, you know, with Colton and I, literally the biggest question we have is, do we, do we drop off the cliff? Because we're sitting on the edge of this literally <laughs> leg swinging, and he's like, you think we can make it? And I'm like, I think we can make it. He's like, how are we going to go down? I'm like, if we just sit... We, we should get down, right? There shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> we got gravity so, working in our favor. Well, we was, just sit. What was, we'll make it. What was funny is uh, we had um, insulating jackets on, and it, it was cold at the top. And uh, I'll, I'll never live this down. We really are, are, like, getting ready to, you know, kick off the bird. Like, we're like, he's like, should we pull these jackets off? I'm like, no. No, it's really cold. Well, we get halfway down, and we're trying to move. And, dude, I'm sweating. I mean, bad, like uh, horribly sweating. And he's like, yeah, really smart. Sweat's just pissing <laughs> off his face, and he's like, I'm taking this thing off now. I'm like, no, not now, not now, because yeah. we're in this wide scree field. That's about the worst, but oh. biggest argument we had, which I uh, had a bad call on that one. But yeah, was, No, I fun. think people are going to enjoy just seeing just uh, – part of the reason I like Solo Hunter, you, you, you play you and Remy down, but the truth is you guys have, you guys have some charisma, some charm, some, you know uh, – some wit and that has a big part of it i would not watch it if you were yeah. such and such guy and picture in my head i'm not going to say his name on here there's just there's just right, a right. you know there's a there's a feel there that well you get to a point where you realize you're like you're not going to make everybody happy you're not going to yeah. appeal to everybody i mean all the women are going to love us obviously but <laughs> I just so eye you, candy. you just have to go and just be yourself and that's where you know i come into these shows and everything and everybody's like man you're just like you are on camera i'm like did you expect anything yeah. any different yeah. but 
I, apparently, so many people in the industry are different, different. than they are on camera. I yeah. don't know. No. I, I've got a whole different – I started watching Solo Hunter, and, and really, Brian, like, He's he pumping me up. No, it. he's pumping me up. I'm like, Anthony, you can do this, man. Because I was going to hunt solo before Ben and Brian got there this year. Yeah. And, and I, not that I thought it would be easy, but I learned <laughs> it was a lot harder. Filming than your I, own filming solo myself, hunt. Yeah. You know, and it, and it wasn't, you know, I, I got fortunate and killed an elk, but that's not here's uh, the, the thing. skill that was required to do what you do. <laughs> right. Here's, right. here's right. the thing. Uh, I got Anthony's footage actually about a month ago. From, from that solo hunt. And because uh, I showed up after he shot the bull and didn't, he, he wounded it. And then we spent the next day killing it because it didn't, didn't die. It was, it was a long, drawn out, uh, it, was a, it was a 24 hour kill. Um, but this, he sends me this footage and I get it. And he's just, it's no good, man. It's no good. <laughs> and it's mostly him going, so yeah, this bull is over here. And then, oh, it just went down this hill. And, is that it? And it's just him talking to this his like it's iPhone, right, or his, his phone. <laughs> I get that, and I'm like, I'm on the edge of my seat. Oh yeah, and I'm I know the outcome, and yet I'm sitting there watching each thing unfold, and you can just see the excitement and all that. And I'm looking at this, and where he devalued the quality <laughs> of that that video. That, that stuff nobody else will do. Everybody else gets just the opposite. Yep. And I'm like, no, no, this is this is great footage, like put together the right way this is a great great hunt to to take somebody on and then he does it solo by himself gets in close kills the elk of course you know nice. you didn't get the uh nice. shot on film turns no, out no. turns out it doesn't always happen right <laughs> and, uh but the dude i was impressed that's awesome i, I want to see that no, no, yeah <laughs> It's I want good. to see all the raw, the raw stuff of it. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't see it, man. I don't. I hear him say that, and I'm like, yeah. no, he's not talking about the same footage. No, I it's got. good, and and he <laughs> yeah. puts a, a lot of this. You know, he's in open country, so he's got a spotting scope, and he's got the he's got the camera mounted to the spotter, uh, phone scope, and no, it, it's cool. It's neat stuff, and after it's wounded and he hits it, you know, it beds down. Gets up, walks a few feet, and beds down. And it's just like he's stressing. He's like, come on, man, it's not. It's stay down, stay down, you know, die. And it doesn't. And it's getting dark. And then he's hiking out in the dark. And he's like, man, I'm, I, don't know, I don't know what to think. He calls me at yeah. 10 p.m. at night. And it's like, I'm like, what are you doing? He's uh, putting some stuff on Facebook. I'm like, any chance you gear by daylight? <laughs> he's like six hours away, <laughs> seven hours I'm away. Like, if I leave in the next 20 yeah, minutes. I could be gone in 20 minutes. <laughs> so I show up, didn't sleep, drove all night. We get there that morning. We go straight there. We hike in. And uh, anyway, yeah. he runs it down like a kudu in Africa <laughs> for three and a half miles or yeah, something like that. And then, and then, uh, not pretty. It was not pretty. Not Sometimes you got to put pressure on him like that, though. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of times you need to hit. just hold back and just yeah. leave yeah. it alone. And other times actually, you want to push him as hard as you can. We I literally it. just listened to Aaron talking about that oh, as really? I was on my way to the trailhead yeah. during this hunt. Make him bleed, man. You have Make enough friends that can't shoot. You become a very good tracker. <laughs> it, man, it started a long time ago on a mistake of, a, of an animal we didn't find. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I'm thinking about it later. I'm like, why didn't we just run it down? I'm, I'm in shape. Make him bleed, and, man. And then yeah. um, I've just, you know, out of whatever, a couple hundred animals is like, um, if it's a one lung or a muscle hit, we'll run that thing down. I mean, like it was damned. We will run it down forever because you can, um, humans can, can go a long way. Yeah, I mean, can. you know, and we're smart. So we can generally figure out where they're going, but the the, the craziest um, one we we did find was Jay's bull. I mean, we tracked that thing like yours forever, and it it literally had one broad head open on the fr on, uh, in front of its legs across its chest. Yeah, and uh, it cut it really deep, and it, it was in deadfall. And the more it hit that oh. timber, the more it opened. Nice. And uh, I doubled up on headlamps, you know. And uh, Jay's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna run this." down <laughs> he's like no no i'm like he's like we're gonna let it lay down yeah. and i'm like okay michael waddell you go ahead and do that <laughs> shit but there's bears here it's gonna get yeah. eaten for one if it dies or, or it might just yeah well that's exactly i that's what i told him was i was like it ain't gonna die he's gonna it's plug gonna it and, and yeah. go on yeah because yep. it'll coagulate and, yeah and so then my but another buddy of mine um he shot a deer in in the bells right yeah in a extremely quartering away shot and he hit one lung well they got up to it and um you know they, they let it Bed down. Anyway, the moral of the story, by the time I got the text, I'm like, run it down now. Run it down now. Yeah. And they're, no, no, we're good. And, uh, well, they 
like it always happens. They got up to the bed, blood everywhere, no blood after the bed. It no coagulated. Right. Lung and and up sometimes, the you know, I think that when you go after those things, they, they don't, you, you have to analyze your terrain, mm -hmm. right? This bull put so much distance between us that a if, times. yeah, a couple of times that if we were in thicker country, we wouldn't have been able to do that, what we right. did. But because it was so wide open, we, we could push it. And we did, and we kept pushing him, and he'd bed down, his mouth's hanging open. You could tell he's, he's and we'd push him. But still, he went three, over, over three, three miles. Three miles and 2,600 yeah. feet elevation. People got to realize how much blood is in that much animal. Yeah. You know. Well, this bull wasn't bleeding at all. No. And, and they'll, live, yeah. they'll live to when, what, less than a third of their blood? Yep. They'll still be alive, you know, and still He, he was just in pain, yeah. and he hadn't drank water, I don't think, since the day before because he bedded right after he got hit. And, that, and it was a hot day, and I think no water. I'm, and you run it down, it just was, it was too hot. It was d overheating. It just, it, it stopped out of exhaustion. My buddy's a vet, and that's how he explained it. He was like, that it's just like a human, but we, obviously we're weenies compared to an elk, but electrolyte, I mean, brain, yeah. the brain of an elk needs to work too, and if you can run it basically silly, you can shoot it again. And now uh, that's what we try to do is run it silly, yep. which the heat probably helped. I'm oh, sure. dude, and we split didn't up. Help, like, didn't help me. Anthony <laughs> goes this way. <laughs> Sometimes I, it doesn't work. Nothing's, I, a, nothing's yeah. a for sure. Anthony goes this yeah. way. I go this way. I chase the herd down this one canyon. Some dude over here is watching both he of us. He got on the wrong herd. Got on the wrong herd. And so I come back, and he's like, I think your buddy went down here. And there was this Anyway, we're getting ready to go down the wrong. Getting drainage. ready to go so down. Good thing that guy saw you. And he's like, "We all know Brian get lost in a phone booth, right?" <laughs> yeah. So, so I go down there and I'm glassing, I'm glassing, and I just see Anthony's head for like a couple of seconds and then dip down, and he is a couple of miles down this <laughs> thing. It's like a dot. I'm like, "You're kidding me!" And uh, you covered some ground fast. Um, <laughs> and uh, anyway, got down there and and he put three more arrows in it. Yeah, he had nice. bedded up in a dry creek bed, and snuck up. And he died in a pile of poison ivy. That was just. Did you guys get well, poison I ivy? saw that oh, photo. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I had it all over both arms. Brian had it up his backside. It was I had it how many on my guys, back, right here. How many guys do you hear every year that lose an elk? I mean, I lost one this yeah, year. That's yeah. just the nature of it. But like, so many people lose elk versus like a deer or anything else because an elk is a different critter, and you can't do the. You can't just count on the exact same thing every yeah, time. Yeah, you have to yeah. really know I, your situation. I would say. 90% of the hunters we know, or not more, Anthony, would never have got that elk. Well, and I think a lot of it was going in our favor with the country. We could have not gotten I, I don't put a lot of skill but in us that country, that elk, was, in that country, to what we I don't know that somebody else would have got that elk because it took an extreme oh, level true. of fitness. Yeah. I mean, well, really, it was mental. You guys, mental everybody toughness. talks about the mental. I mean, my fitness was gone by that point. I was so dehydrated and exhausted but it was just like i'm not giving up as long as i can find that bull i'm not giving up i i it's a damn good bull too when we yeah, climbed that hill on the way out because we left all our knives <laughs> at the top at that three thousand foot elevation <laughs> three miles back i i'm hiking back and i'm just like i hate anthony's guts and you know <laughs> he's stupid idiot because we had the bull in a brush patch <clears throat> somebody first thing that like morning yards of it <laughs> Yeah, didn't I did. <laughs> I, walked, I walked within like 20 yards okay. and didn't even see it. And there's only two places to hide in this entire meadow. And I looked at it, and I'm like, no, he's not in there. <laughs> and he gets to me 80 yards away. I'm like, Brian, did you go through that brush patch? He's like, yeah, I just walked right through it. I'm like, then what's that? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I turn right around, I'm like, I see the look on his face, and I'm like, and I'm already thinking how uh -oh. embarrassing. <laughs> the thing didn't move. It was like a, it was just a, a like a, like a black tail, like, like a, a quail uh, in a bush, you know. And uh, so Anthony turns around, and I have tremendous respect for Anthony's sneaky feet and his, his ability to stalk. And so This I, guy? Oh, yeah, dude, he's a ninja. Lightfoot? I'm not joking, really? dude, he's a ninja. He's built like a tank. And he's like, like some kind of stealth ninja. And he, wow. And so Didn't I'm, show it that day. So I'm expecting Anthony, I have all this, con I'm expecting him to sneak up on this, this elk, right? And Anthony's really good, like with blacktails. He'll see a blacktail there. He won't make eye contact with it. He's like. And he'll walk by and pretend like he doesn't see it, you know, and then <laughs> whack. And, and so I'm expecting this out of Anthony. No, he zooms right in on it, the thing's walks the right opposite. to it. <laughs> I'm thinking that he just walked within 20 yeah, yards of it. He's dead, done. Right? He he's can't get close. up. It's, and yeah, so that's what I was he got real aggressive and careless. And I could have shot him. I stopped and drew. And I, I can get close. He doesn't even Why not get here, closer? Really? And I got oh the camera on this, and he could have drilled it right there first morning. 
all done, yeah. like piece of cake. Uh, that, see instead, what I mean? I'm not claiming any skill out of getting this. Elk instead, here. the thing awesome. jumps up and runs, and it runs, and it, and we're like, oh, well, that didn't work out. The, he he was holding up, he was holding up on us. We thought, I thought he was so wounded because I walked within yeah, sure. 15 or 20 yards of him, and he didn't jump up. He stayed low. But the fact was, he just could tell I didn't know he was there. He was playing muley buck on you. Yeah. 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 That and you just, don't that exp- yeah. you just don't think an elk <laughs> really does that. I didn't. Those things are so damn. People There's think that the cows lead the herd or whatever. Man, those bulls. He's an old bull. They're amazing. He's a beautiful bull. And then when he runs off, and then it's like he runs, he beds. Backs, back there he runs, he beds. Right. He walks, he just beds every so many feet as he climbs this hill, goes over the top. Man, it was just a brutal day. So you could have just told that story, yeah, he shot the elk, we got it the next day, you know. Lollygagged yeah, your way through that story, but no, we, w- we got 10 minutes worth of awesome, <laughs> compelling story. of that. Well, <laughs> that's here's storytelling the, right there. Here's the right? thing, though. Um, I thought, we, we even thought about, you know, do we just post the photos and go, yeah, Anthony killed a great bull? Do, do we podcast this whole thing about how he wounded it with a with a meat hit. It bled, and we had to run it down. And that you, you just did. So we we, we did we back did. at the time, and I'm like, you know it. what? We did a podcast on it. it we're just honest. And I figured you know, we get hammered for it. We really did. If people well, yeah, people want to just be like, you shouldn't have taken that shot. It wasn't a good shot, or you made a bad shot. Learn how to shoot, or whatever. I was kind of expecting a lot of that. No, we didn't get hardly any. You know your audience. You know you're you're yeah. appealing to your audience, and. I think that there was a lot we learned from it, and we were we were making fun of Aaron, uh, we, like quoting him, because we were using a lot of what we had learned, and we had been hunting a long time. Yet you there were, were quoting things, Snyder, yeah, <laughs> I about, can only imagine about chasing him down the hill, and then we found an echo thermal corridor, eco thermal, eco thermal, <laughs> echo eco, it's the same thing, <laughs> eco thermal corridor, and Which we, our definition of that is. We can't carry any more weight. It's coming off right here. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so we ditched a couple bags of meat that we just couldn't carry. And we were, we, uh, that was a long day, man. It was 12 miles in one day or something like yeah. that, round trip. And it was That's blazing tough. hot. That's brutal. And, and we put 200 pounds on our backs <laughs> and went about 200 yards. And we're like, we're never going to make it we out. We were just so dehydrated at that point, yeah. though. And so we started so dumping was- gear and we had to. To get it down to about 130 pounds or something. We didn't dump much meat. We dumped a lot of camera gear and, and bows, bows and, and equipment. But that's what got dumped. we did have to put some, some scrap meat down. Yeah. We just ditched it, and then we came back the next morning. Yeah, clarify that you came back to get the meat. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we no, came we back. We picked to, up the trail as <laughs> we went oh, yeah. back up the yeah. mountain. And we got in as quick as we could, but still, by the time we got there, sun had come out. But that meat. We just happened to put it in this spot shaded. where it was shaded and cool. We, we, lo- we lost about this much meat in the center of that bag. That's it. That yeah. was it. Oh, that's good. About uh, a, meat can like, meat can go quite a t- quite a long time if you find the right spot to put it. Yeah. I don't think people realize how how long because we we do multi tag hunts. Oh uh, yeah. I've I've left elk and creeks for six seven days and there's never. I mean, it's like a refrigerator. People you don't look yeah. at it that way. Yeah. yeah, you find the right spot. We've done that too. Well, we just we let it cool. I mean, we did a podcast on this, but. James uh, Pecker, a uh, hunt buddy of mine, he's he's the most anal guy I, I know about meat care. But um, we just let it cool, let it drip, let it drain, and then yeah. it goes into a waterproof sack, and uh, we just put it in the creek and leave it. It's like a refrigerator. Yeah. Um, and people get wrapped up about the garbage bag or whatever. I don't have trichinosis, haven't died of cancer, and I've put it yeah. meat in garbage bags. It's yeah. in a game bag and then a garbage bag. but It's dry. It's yeah. dry. Yeah. It that's dry yeah. You, start, you start getting it wet, that's when the bacteria starts to grow yeah. and eat yeah. away. You, d- you did an episode on pack, yeah. packing that elk out, yeah. pretty much just start to finish. And yeah. most of the show was just breaking it down and getting it out. Yeah. People didn't even realize that I didn't kill the elk on camera in that episode. Like, all the comments I got were, that was an awesome hunt, yeah. and I loved how you showed this. Nobody ever once said, when did you kill that elk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, no, it really wasn't about the kill shot no. at all. That's and because I didn't get the kill shot. That's why the episode and that's out that yeah, way. But that's still, great. it's like good content. Yeah. Exactly. Well, when you think about it, I mean, everybody knows how to shoot a bow, right? Yeah. So everybody yeah. knows how to shoot an animal. You can't, uh, you can't debone a foam 3D target. That shit doesn't <laughs> happen, right? That's where yeah. trying to explain that to people uh, is yeah. difficult, because especially somebody that's done it a lot. And people ask, how do you do it? I'm like, you, you just kind of do it, right? It, yeah. I, 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 believe me, the first time you do it, 
you'll know the second time, exactly. or you'll have a good idea. I remember the first time we did the, the gutless method. We thought we'd never do it again, but yeah. now, I mean, just we went out. And it's, uh -huh. you know. it's been 20 years since I, well, yeah. I had to go to nail a couple of years ago, but <laughs> I've been doing that forever just yeah. because of not having to deal with it. Yeah. Colton, they, him and his, his they're from Craig, Colorado, <laughs> and he and his dad have killed I don't know, 20, 30 bulls, whatever. Colton's been hunting for a long time, and the way that I had done it was different than they had done it. And you can always learn, I guess, but yeah. getting that on camera is important because you can't take a photo and get how to debone an elk or, yeah. or a gutless method or whatever else. I need to show more of the detail. Like, I didn't film the whole process because the, the networks are really finicky. Like, I pushed the yeah. envelope hard on that. I, no one on, on Outdoor Channel history has ever pushed the envelope as far as I did on that episode. Yeah. And they were even a little bit hesitant to let it go. They did, and the response has, has been tremendous. So. Yeah. I didn't even really get to show the good stuff, you know, really how to dig in and do that. And there's enough, fortunately, there's enough videos out on YouTube. I've even got one of showing how to do the gutless and break Did it Did you get called an idiot on yours? If you do it wrong. No, that's, that's right. what's crazy. People stuff. will hate you. I don't get a lot of negativity. Like, you even hear kids with, like, 60 followers on Instagram showing the hate mail, or, which is probably their buddy well, faking mine, it. But. Mine was for, because um, I left scraps. But yeah. I said, like, seven or eight times, oh, yeah. we're going to come back and get the scraps. And it was hot, you know, and I literally flew through it, but it gave the general premise. If I ever do one again, it is going to be perfect. You just need to smile more so they think I, you're I, a nice guy. And I they don't want to, like, throw well, it. And the harsh reality is, though, if you've got this meat that you're rushing to take care of, yeah, you're going to leave the scraps. You're going to take a chance with the scraps. Yeah. And, and yes. you're not going to leave the hind quarter there and come back for it, right? Yeah. Or the yeah. back straps. I mean, that's what we had. We're going to dump something. It's going to be the scrap bag. Well, and the yeah. rack and, and the cape reality. is always yeah. the last thing yeah, to come yeah, off yeah. the mountain. That's yeah. why you, you, you have all these cool owners, photos yeah. with not a loaded pack sometimes because you, the meat's already out. You know, it's well, in the cooler already. There's nothing cool about a pack that looks like it does every other day of the year because <laughs> you're not. It's full of shit, <laughs> right? I right. mean, it's got meat in it or it's got gear in it. It looks the same because people ask me. Well, where's the the meat? And I'm like, well, how do you know that bag's not full of meat? Oh, <laughs> it looks the same as it did yesterday before I killed it. It's a yeah. bag. Yeah. People, well, people just like to be pecker woods. But. Yeah. I, I don't get a lot of that. I don't know why. Maybe it's because yeah. I'm such a nice guy. I don't know. <laughs> but, like, I don't get a lot of negative. YouTube is really the only place I get. And those are just trolls, you know. But, yeah. you know, five years ago I got a death threat, you know. I, yeah, yeah. I got a comment of one guy who said, I, I, you know, my favorite hunt would be to you go out with your boy and accidentally shoot him in the guts and watch him bleed out and die, you know? Oh. So I used to get some harsh stuff, but I, I don't get that anymore at all. I don't know why. You know? I, Maybe I I'm think, not big enough to get that stuff. I think I we get it because um, uh, we don't have a cleaned up nice package that we deliver. Sometimes it's sort of like... Mechanical broadheads are better than fixed. Or, you know, it's um, Aaron's like, 100-yard shots? What's wrong with them? Oh. And, and then you start. Nothing it, if you make it. <laughs> and, and so <laughs> You practice. Yeah. And I didn't say that. <laughs> but, true. I'm exaggerating. Yeah. But still, those sort of things kind of uh, can be polarizing a little bit. Right. But I, we do it because it's just honest yeah. and it, it's real. But. Honestly, I, I'm pretty we're, guarded with stuff. I, I'm careful with a lot of stuff. But. I think you have to be to a degree if you're on a TV network. It's what goes with the, comes with the territory. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I like it that, you know, everyone's pushing those limits in the in before. I don't think you guys really on TV. They even wanted to see blood. It's in the it's in the description in the in the production guidelines that up until two years ago, myself and uh, David Block at Outdoor Edge Knives, we pushed so hard. The programming director at the time, we pushed him so hard to be able to show that content. For yeah. one, we want to sell knives. For two, we want to show the authentic uh, part of the hunt. Right. So we pushed and pushed and pushed, and I feel like he and I were very instrumental in getting those right, those guidelines changed. And even though, even so, when I put that episode out last year, it was like way beyond what what yeah. they wanted to show. And then Ridge Reaper did some of the same thing with Under Armour. Under Armour, and uh, now I think it's it's as long as you're not showing excessive blood and, and guts and all yeah. those kind of things, you're doing it tactfully. But you're sh and you're doing it as an instruction to show people and to teach. Man, it's it's about you can do about anything. It's now. so great because it really puts that connection between. You know, food, no. the, 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 the animal on the hoof and the food in your kitchen. Right. And that link is just missing in today's society. It has been, has been for a long time. Yeah. Well, 
I want to thank you for coming on the podcast yeah, again, man. and we gotta, we gotta, thank you. we gotta do thank this you. a little more often. I like the dynamic of the multiple, multiple guys here. I do too. Know? It's just fun to hang out with a group of guys and just yeah. have a conversation about hunting. I need to go drink some Yeti because I'm starting to. Yeah, I'm he's starting to go down. Oh, also, Aaron, thanks for can, sitting in on the podcast with me, man. I love, <laughs> yeah. I love talk. Aaron and I talk together, you know, often, and we get each other. So to get it all like this, it's, yeah. it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yep. I just, um, I, uh, I didn't quit my full dose of caffeine this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, for whatever reason, I was so tired I forgot to grab a coffee. Oh, and man. then we got over here. I'm like, man, why am I so tired? Well, I didn't get any coffee. And I really you did well, coffee. man. You did awesome. Yeah. Man. How many podcasts have you done this week? <laughs> Probably ten or eleven. Oh, me, man. just me. You've just done you. way more than I have. Yeah. We did seven. How do no, you? Did five how are you still going? Like, are you that interested in people that you're like still on your A game every time? Do I ever get tired of talking? Or was no, this was no, this his A no, game or his that. C game or B game? <laughs> no, this is he's in his element. With nice. This. It, it's not. <laughs> I, I I honestly am really curious um and it helps i'll be honest when i'm talking to other hunters like we talked about this last yeah yeah yeah. when we're talking to hunters that hunt like us or that are kind of more hardcore or whatever we're 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 excited to have those we're really curious and when we're talking to maybe more of a a ambassador for hunting it's not all that hardcore but has a very it's a big platform. Platform. Because yeah. We're not as excited about those conversations just because we don't relate on the same level. But but I do enjoy them. But these are like the real like hunting conversations. You, you do a damn on. good job, man. You really do. <laughs> I like them a lot. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Tim. Thanks. Stay gritty. You bet. And uh, yeah, let's do this again soon. I'd like to. That'd be All right. fun. Okay, gritty friends. I hope you enjoyed that podcast. If you did, please take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher. We love reading your reviews. And connect with us on social media if you're on there. Look us up on Facebook and Instagram. And take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can receive notifications when we upload new videos. We've got a sweet deal with Mountain Ops. You get 20% off on all Mountain Ops supplements, combo packs, and apparel when you type in the word gritty at checkout. If you're a hardcore elk hunter or you want to be, go to the Elk 101 website online and check them out. Our friend Corey Jacobson is killing it with some of the best elk hunting information and entertainment on the web. If you haven't heard, we're doing a huge gear giveaway to try and grow and expand the gritty community on Facebook and Instagram. I asked a bunch of friends to pitch in on this gear giveaway, and they all came through with some awesome stuff. Our friends at Kefaru, Rockslide, First Light, Phelps Game Calls, One Shot Gear, Mountain Ops, Triple X Archery, Blacktail Outdoors, and Is It September Yet are pitching in some sweet gear for the giveaway. We'll announce all the details in the next few weeks. All you have to do to be entered to win is like our Gritty Bowman Facebook page and follow us on Instagram. All right, friends, let me leave you with one other quote from Theodore Roosevelt who said, It behooves every man to remember that the work of the critic is of altogether secondary importance and that, in the end, progress is accomplished by the man who does things. We all have a choice. We can be people who do things or people who criticize the work of others. It's pretty simple, really. Get out there and do your thing. Good luck on your hunts and stay gritty. This is Ty Stubblefield, and you're listening to the Gritty Bowman. Gritty Bowman. <laughs> <laughs>